Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. I'm Pastor Kathy Nygaard. I am the pastor for the Granville Norwich Lutheran Parish, which is First Lutheran Church in Granville and Norwich Lutheran Church in Norwich. So while we are not meeting in person during this time of um, restrictions due to trying to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus, um, we are worshiping each week at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings on Facebook Live. That is then later also um, uploaded and posted on our YouTube channel, which is also Granville Norwich Lutheran Parish. So um, if you know folks that aren't on Facebook, um, but have internet access or smart TVs um, that they can watch YouTube on, um, just let them know um, that that's where they can find us um, it generally takes a couple of hours for me to get that um, uploaded and transferred over to YouTube. So this morning we tried a thing. We tried a Zoom coffee hour. And I think maybe some of you had trouble getting in on the link. Um, I had posted a, a link like at about 10 minutes um, before 10 o'clock and I think that um, was probably a little easier access um, than the one that I had posted yesterday. I think we'll try that again next Sunday. Um, if you've not um, been on Zoom before, um, it's a interactive video um, where multiple participants can be on. Um, and um, so we can have up to 100 people that would um, join us in that format, and then we show up on little tiles like um, like the Brady Bunch. Um, so, um, but it is a, a, a way that we can um, connect with one another in our community, um, our faith community, um, in the way that we do when we gather with a cup of coffee and um, some snacks in the church basement. So we'll try that again next week, um, and um, hopefully that won't be problematic. Maybe I'll even do some kind of um, short test run um, ahead of that um, so people can practice logging in and um, and participating that way if you haven't been on a Zoom call. So um, the other kind of primary announcement that we have is that the Western North Dakota Synod Assembly that was scheduled the first weekend of June has been canceled due to um, restrictions of gathering large groups of people together. Instead, a special meeting of the Synod has been scheduled for Friday, July 17th, um, to conduct the business of the Synod, which is primarily to elect um, people to a variety of positions, including that of Synod Bishop. So as more details come out um, on that, um, your um, elected delegates will um, get more details. So um, please continue to hold our synod staff in your prayers as they um, scramble um, to uh, make everything work for all of our churches in Western North Dakota. And I think that is kind of it for announcements so we will then turn to the brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive our forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things, done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, 
so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our entrance hymn today is, We Know That Christ Is Raised. Thank you to Linda Smetty for providing our music for our worship today. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We will sing our Kyrie today. This is one that we are learning this season. If you... Um, If you catch on to the refrain, that's fairly easy, um, and we'll work our way through the verses.
Sometimes I think people are curious about that word, Kyrie eleison, and that is Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Those are the prayers that we pray as we begin our worship together. Now we'll turn to our prayer for the day. Let's pray that together. O oh God, your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our scripture readings for today. Our first reading for today, um, like all of the Easter season, we substitute readings from Acts, from the early Christian church, um, instead of um, Hebrew texts from the Old Testament. So a reading from the second chapter of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed for this Sunday um, comes from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Our next reading comes to us from um, 1 Peter. We are making our way um, through First Peter this um, Easter season. Um, so um, more words from the early church. This is from the first chapter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you 
were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you may have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Again, this is the word of the Lord. During this Easter season, for our gospel acclamation, we are singing Halle, Halle, Halle. Our gospel reading for this Sunday comes from the 24th chapter of Luke. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all of the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all of the things that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then Beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? 
That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sometimes I just need to take a break from social media. During the course of time, the reasons for that can be varied. Oversharers, divisive political vitriol, too many photos of elaborately plated food, all of those copy and paste things or other general stupidity. But recently, I've decided that I can't watch and read about the variety of ways that people are exercising during this time when people are staying at home more and gyms are closed. Of course, that's because it induces a certain level of guilt because I have been on a long-term fast from working out. But once upon a time in a land far, far away, that wasn't the case. For decades, I played team sports year-round. And believe it or not, I have actually completed two half marathons. Which means there was a time when I was accustomed to walking regularly and sometimes at great distance. So when our gospel text for today leads off with a mileage count for the trip to Emmaus, that tells us something, that tells me something. But first, Let's look at some other details. Particularly in this time, I am appreciative that Luke helps us figure out what day of the week it is. Because it's hard to keep track these days, isn't it? On Thursday morning, I got up, went to take my medications only to find an empty slot for Thursday, meaning that somewhere earlier in the week, I had miscalculated taking a double dose. Fortunately, there was no ill effects to that. But I have been tempted to program Alexa to tell me what day of the week it is when I get up in the morning. Here in Luke, he tells us that it is the same day which draws us back into the story a little bit further, where we learn it is the first day of the week, or Sunday, just like it is today, in case you've somehow lost track. But it wasn't just any Sunday. It was a super extraordinary Sunday. It was the first Easter Sunday when Mary Magdalene and some of the other women had gone to Jesus' tomb, found it empty, and heard the words of the angel saying, he is not here, he is risen. The women ran back to tell the other disciples all about it, but nobody believed them. Now it is later in the day, and we find two of Jesus' followers Cleopas and someone who doesn't even warrant a name drop, walking along the road to Emmaus, talking about everything that has happened since Thursday when Jesus was arrested and Friday when he was sentenced to death on a cross and laid in a tomb and all of the hullabaloo that went on this morning with the empty tomb. As they are walking and talking, we learn that Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. It's curious to me in the variety of resurrection appearances how Jesus is not readily identifiable, even to his closest friends and followers. Maybe it was simply because they absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt, knew that he had died on that cross. Perhaps he somehow looked different. 
But here Luke says that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And through the entirety of the story, it appears that their eyes never do function in the way they normally do to see things. Rather, it is their ears and their hearts that perform the function of recognition, of seeing as in understanding. So let's get back to that mileage thing. We hear that the distance between Jerusalem and the village of Emmaus is seven miles. For us 21st century North Dakotans, it is a mere skip and a jump, less than the distance between Granville and Norwich. A couple of minutes. But in the first century for Cleopas and his companion on foot, that would be a journey of about two hours or perhaps longer. And these are two people who have just had their worlds turned upside down. They are distraught, disoriented, and when I am sad, it slows me down physically. And then Jesus comes near. Jesus doesn't just pop on the scene and announce, hey, I'm back, everything's going to be okay. He doesn't pull off his wig and a fake mustache to prove that what the women reported earlier in the day is true. Rather, Jesus walks beside these people that he knows are grieving. They are mourning. Their friend, their teacher, their hope for the future is dead. They watched him die on a cross. They watched him laid in a tomb, and now they think somebody has stolen his cold stone body. One devastation after another, and Jesus hears them out. Jesus wants to know them, wants to know what's happening with them, and he walks beside them. Our God is the one who is willing to walk beside us, whatever our circumstances, however lost or confused or distraught or grief-stricken we may be. Jesus will walk beside us and accompany us in the particular details of our own story. And in the midst of it all, Jesus shares scripture with them those familiar stories of God's people throughout time, Moses and the prophets. It's not a rushed conversation or a sales pitch. It is at least two hours of shared story, back and forth. And when they get to Emmaus, it appears that Jesus plans to continue on his way. Because our God isn't pushy. Our God invites us into conversation and into relationship when we are open, and open to hearing God's word. Jesus has engaged with Cleopas and the other, and they are not willing to just let him walk away. Instead, they invite him to share a meal and more conversation, to rest his head and it is in that conversation, in that meal, that their ears and their hearts turn to the recognition of the Savior. It is hard to read this text and not think about Holy Communion. During this time when we haven't been gathering in person for worship, we have been fasting from Holy Communion. But that doesn't mean that we don't think about it while we worship at a distance from one another. And it doesn't mean that we don't miss it. And several of you have asked about some other ways to have communion, probably because you've seen some ideas online like drive through communion. We think about communion when we read this passage from Luke because for centuries, our communion liturgy has been fashioned after this encounter with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. 
It is a threefold ritual. First, we hear the words of Scripture. Secondly, that Scripture is interpreted to reveal Christ to us. And then, and then we gather at table together to feast with our Lord. And so theologically and practically for that matter, I don't support the idea of drive through communion because communion isn't just an act in and of itself. It can't be separated from hearing the story and having the story interpreted. Communion doesn't stand alone. It's part of our whole worship service. Of course, it would be delightful to see people, just like it was on Friday night when TGU organized cruising Main Street in both Granville and Towner, as I waved to everyone from the corner of the church lot with my signs and my wigs. However, the procedures that would need to be put in place so I could dispense tiny little cups of wine and paper-like wafers through this time of hyper-sanitization feel like they would distract, detract from any semblance of sanctity, failing to provide the sense of peace and assurance that we are seeking in that sacrament. And yet while this gospel story provides the structure that we have patterned our holy communion practices after for centuries, that's not what happened on that first Easter Sunday as Jesus encountered Cleopas and his companion on the road to Emmaus. Jesus wasn't creating a template um, for future generations of his followers. Rather, Jesus was walking beside people who were confused and frightened and grieving. And he joined them at their table because that is where love and compassion are so often shared. It is where unexpected conversations take place. It is where we take our places side by side with one another. It's where holy moments occur. Here in the Gospel of Luke and its sequel, the Book of Acts, when we hear about the early church breaking bread, it's part of a collective meal with people in close relationship with one another. They gather around the tables in their homes. You may have seen the cartoon posted on the parish Facebook page depicting a conversation between Satan and God with the devil bragging that with COVID-19 he'd closed all of the churches. While God counters that on the contrary, God has opened a church in every home. The living word of God encounters us on our journeys, even when we are fasting from the ritual of Holy Communion. Jesus shows up wherever the word is preached and proclaimed, even when we don't recognize him. The church is not closed. The church, just like the two on the road to Emmaus, is on the move. It is found in relationship, through listening with our ears and caring with our hearts so that we may love one another. Are our hearts not burning within us as we seek to recognize our risen Lord? Amen. Our um, hymn of the day today is called Day of Arising. We have sung it to a different tune in the past, but I just thought it would be easier to sing it to a more familiar tune, tune today. So we're going to sing it to the tune of Morning Has Broken. with his own when they invite 
going to um, continue now with a blessing of the quilts um, here in um, First Lutheran Church. Um, you can see all of the quilts beautifully displayed on the pews here, um, and there are some behind me as well, um, and off to the um, choir loft, so um, they are uh, abundant um, even though the quilters have not been gathering now for several weeks. Um, they continue to make tops at their homes, so um, next season they will have plenty of um, materials um, to get busy with. But we are going to bless these quilts. Um, they will be um, sent on their way for many purposes. Most of them will go um, to Lutheran World Relief um, some will go to our high school seniors and also um, you can see Linda down there in the corner. She's got um, our collection for Lent kind of got disrupted a little bit, but we have been gathering um, laundry detergent and dish soap for um, the homeless coalition in Minot. So um, we also have a couple baskets of those that we're going to bless um, for their purposes today. So I'm going to grab some water here before we go on. So I'm just going to let you admire the quilts for a while. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts. You have blessed our quilters with good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, to tie clever knots, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. And now we offer the fruits of their labors, the quilts they have made to you. We dedicate these quilts and household supplies trusting that your love will go wherever each quilt or supply is needed, making it more than just a piece of material or a collection of items, making each piece that has been created an expression of love. There's no way for us to imagine the power and effect an act of love can have on a person's life. How, can you, how you can use something as small as a quilt or laundry detergent or dish soap to radiate your love from us to the world. May these be used in your service and become blessings for all who receive them. Lord, we know that we all, all that we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all of our being Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills so that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Amen. So some of the quilts here will also um, go to um, Metagoshi Ministries to support um, their um, fundraising activities with their quilt auction. And I don't know that our, our seniors have been over to um, select quilts. Um, so if you're out there listening, um, Jared, John, um, 
you need to come and pick out um, a quilt. Um, a couple of them will have some tags on them, so don't pick those. Um, but just leave your name on the one that you would like. Um, and um, I want to be able to do some kind of um, blessing for those seniors as well. So we'll have to figure that out in the coming weeks. We are going to um, move on now to our offering time, which is always awkward um, when we aren't physically in a place with one another. Um, but there are many ways um, that we continue to offer um, our time and our talents and our resources to the Lord. Um, many of you have um, have accepted new vocations in this time as homeschool teachers. Um, for me, I've become a televangelist. Um, so we are finding new ways to use the gifts that God has given us. In our more traditional offerings, the financial offerings to support the ministry of the church, um, you can go the old fashioned route and mail your giving in you can make arrangements with your bank um, to set up giving. Here at First Lutheran, there is physically a drop box that you can um, drop your giving off at. And we also have online giving set up um, through our Granville Norwich Lutheran Parish Facebook page. So you go to that. Um, on your phone, you scroll down. On your um, laptop, um, it will be down on the bottom right-hand corner in that About section by the map. Scroll down um, beyond the map, and you will find a little thing that says Tithely Give. You just click on that link. It pops up um, an easy um, donation um, site there if you haven't done it before. Um, pretty quick and easy process that walks you through to get set up. So we are grateful for the gifts that you give in so many ways and the um, and the ways that you answer um, God's call in this time of social distancing and um, many restrictions and changes in our lives. Our offering song for this Sunday um, in, throughout our um, Easter season is Alleluia, Alleluia, Give Thanks. We do three verses. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, 
ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the prayers of the church. I will end the petitions. Lord, in your mercy, you can respond. Hear our prayer. I'm going to need a drink of water again. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love with their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles and prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. For farmers and ranchers and gardeners who await warmer, warmer soil, to plant seeds. For broken, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Guide leaders to make wise and well thought out decisions regarding COVID-19 that are just for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all of those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in mind, body, or spirit. We remember especially Nick Fakin and Sandy Bacon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward in hope of new life with Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of the Emmaus Road be upon you. The blessing that shares sorrow's burden on the way, that wakes to hope because of story and hospitality. 
that is stirred to recognition of the stranger as Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, whose spirit sparks and blazes in the world even today. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song today is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, and the tune is um, to Earth and All Stars, because I see someone out there who that's their favorite song. Just as he said, go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Have a good week, everyone.